We are Josh and Amanda Blankenship, and we've been at Bethel since 2007, I believe. Mm -hmm. All of a sudden, August 1st, I think, give or take a day, I was, I came down with a heavy fever and just didn't feel good, and I knew something was wrong. August 1st through August 8th, I was flat on my back for eight days with a fever and just every symptom that comes along with COVID, I knew I had it because it's unlike anything I'd ever had. Oxygen started getting low, really low, and eventually I just ended up passing out. She called the ambulance and they showed up and I was sitting out there waiting for them on the, on the doorstep, on the bench, and I passed out again. <laughs> so I knew uh, it was time to go in. So I went, went into the hospital and, and basically it spiraled downhill from there. I was in the hospital for 10 days and it got pretty, pretty dicey in there. I didn't know if I was gonna make it out. I almost had to go to a respirator, but, but didn't. Thank the Lord I did not have to go that far. I mean, I've been a worship leader for 10 years, and I, that's how we start our, our worship on Sundays. We start with song, and we go into battle with that. And it was like the first time in my life that I was, I was fighting for my husband in song every day in my home. I kept singing that song, Peace Be Still. That, that was my anthem while Josh was in the hospital, Peace Be Still. And uh, we had to go get tested. Our doctor said, you need to go get COVID tested. So I got the kids in the car and that was the first day I had seen them in probably seven days. I get a call from the doctor and the, they said, he, he needs more oxygen and there's nothing else that we can do. I was so scared being in the car with my kids and they heard all that. And my kids were sitting back there with their little masks on and they were just crying and it was just like this, it was the hardest time. And we came home and there was um, a care package on our front porch from my neighbor across the street. And it had this journal and it says, be still. And that had been my song, like, peace be still. And so it was just like, God just kept reminding me, be still and to trust in him. The worst part was having zero control of what was happening. Am I dying? Am I gonna die tomorrow? <laughs> Am I gonna wake up and not be able to breathe at all? Not be able to call a nurse? That was scary. It was totally out of control. Fervent prayer in the hospital bed, trying to say, you know, God, please take this from me, please heal me. And nothing's happening. It just keeps getting worse. It wasn't, it just kept getting worse. And finally, finally it started subsiding. And a little bit, just a little bit, <laughs> every day, it just got a little bit better. We're gonna do a test to see if he had blood clots in his legs or blood clots by his lungs, mm -hmm. in his lungs. You know, Josh's name, Josh, like, okay, in the Bible, Josh fought the battle of Jericho. And I just, that was what I went with. I was like, you know what? We're gonna fight this battle. And so I took my kids and I said, guys, how did the walls come down? They went around the building six times on the seventh day. They went around seven times and then they screamed and the walls came down. So that's what we're gonna do today. We marched around our house seven times. And every time it was, I made little tick marks on my hand and I, I just told them to, right now we're gonna pray for the doctors. And then we just pray for the doctors the whole time. And the next time we would pray for our country. And, and we just had something different every time. And then at the end we stood in the front and we screamed at the top of our lungs that the walls would come down, that this is the day we're gonna see this miracle in daddy. That's what we did. And then we waited for six hours until the doctor called and he said, I don't know how to explain it, but his numbers are going down. We didn't find any blood clots. And I was like, I can explain it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, God was here and he, he is faithful. Overwhelming, I mean, the prayer chains, multiple churches, I mean, Seattle to California to all over the place. People we knew took it before their church and just, I've, we've never seen so many people praying at the same time. C3, the Living Room Church sent flowers. Hillspring Church called to pray with me. Dave Bechtel called Josh several times in the hospital. Crossview Church called Josh mm -hmm. to pray with them. It was just the big church was yeah. coming in and taking care of us at a time that we didn't even know what we needed. The neighbors helped. My lawn was mowed twice a week. Um, everything that we needed was, was taken care of. And we didn't ask. They took it upon themselves. They just took what they could help with. But from prayer chains to people helping to, to food, people brought food for the kids, food for me in the hospital. It changed my outlook on when somebody's sick and somebody needs help. Not just saying, oh, let me know if I can do anything. No, I'm doing something for you. Tell yeah. me what I can do and I'm gonna be there today. So figure it out. For me, it's my hands are open. It was the day that I said, Lord, 
I'm giving this to you. I'm walking around my house. I'm fighting for Josh, but it, he's your child. Your will be done, you know? And so for me, what I'm taking from this is giving God control because I can't, I, I can't do it on my own. That and just how much worship is my battle cry. Like that is a form of, of battle is, is through worship. So I learned that.